Hi everyone. The purpose of this video is to help you with this topic, which is determining end behavior and intercepts to graph a polynomial function on Alex. My recommendation here is to be sure you have a blank sheet of paper so you can graph this function on paper first before we work on graphing it in Alex. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. So the first question is regarding the end behavior of this function. And what we need to remember regarding end behavior is that the end behavior is going to be determined by the degree of the function as well as the sign of the leading coefficient. So we need to figure out the degree of the function as well as the leading coefficient. Both of these are necessary. Now, looking at the function that we've been given, you also need to notice that this particular function is in factored form. It hasn't been distributed and expanded and put in standard form, but rather it's in factored form. So we cannot just look for the largest exponent to figure out the degree, but we have to think about what it would look like if we actually did multiply this out. The good news is we don't have to actually multiply it, but we can figure it out by just taking a look at each individual factor. So for starters, we have this negative out in front, and then inside the first factor we have an x. So I'm going to keep track of that negative, and then the first factor has an x. If we were to multiply that by the second factor, the second factor also has an x, but it is going to be squared. So if we were to distribute and multiply that out, we know we would end up with a term that contains x squared. And the third factor also contains an x. So if you think about multiplying those together, x times x squared times x will give us x to the fourth. So we would end up with negative x to the fourth as our leading term. And that tells me this exponent, the largest exponent, is going to be a 4. So that means that our function is degree 4. And the negative in front is the leading coefficient. So we are recognizing that we would expect to have a negative leading coefficient. So because the degree is 4, that's an even degree, that tells me that the ends of the graph are going to point in the same direction. So either they're both going to point up or the ends will both point down. And in this case, I know the ends are going to both point down because the leading coefficient is negative. So therefore, I am able to determine the end behavior of this graph. Both the left and the right sides of the graph are going to fall. So we say the left side falls and the right side falls as well. That's how we would describe that in words. So we can choose the end behavior here, which is going to be that the graph falls to the left and falls to the right. Now the next step is to find the zeros of the function. And the good news here is that this particular function is already in factored form, so finding the zeros is going to be relatively quick. All right, so finding the zeros, Remember, the zeros are going to be the x values that cause the y value to equal zero. So basically, it's like we're substituting a big zero in for y and solving the resulting equation. So zero is equal to negative x plus one times x minus one squared times x minus two. So if we were to do this algebraically, we would set each factor equal to zero. So that would mean I'd set x plus 1 equal to 0, and then x minus 1 equal to 0, and then x minus 2 equal to 0, and solve, which would give me three of my zeros, x equals negative 1, positive 1, and positive 2. However, if you happen to remember the factor theorem from earlier, you don't have to show this work at all because if x plus 1 is a factor, then we automatically know that negative 1 is the 0. And if x minus 1 is a factor, then we know that positive 1 is the 0. And if x minus 2 is the factor, then positive 2 is the 0. So this work is really not necessary if you know the factor theorem. So I've listed three of the zeros. However, because we just said earlier that it is a polynomial that's degree four, there really are four zeros. But we have to recognize that the second factor, the x minus one, was being squared. 
So you could think of that as an additional factor of an x minus 1. So if you were to set that equal to 0 and solve, you would get a fourth 0. It's a duplicate of one we already had. So when we're listing all of our zeros out, and I like to actually list them all, our zeros are going to be negative 1, and that only appears one time. Then we have positive 1, and that 0 appears twice, so that's called a multiplicity. So I'll write that's a multiplicity of 2, because that 0 appears two times. And then the last 0 is x equals 2. So I know all of my zeros. Then, since I have determined the multiplicity, I also know whether or not the graph is going to cross the x-axis at the zero, or if it is going to just touch the x-axis. So remember, when you have an even multiplicity, zeros that have an even multiplicity are going to cause the graph to touch the x-axis. So even multiplicities cause the graph to touch the x-axis. Therefore, when I look at my zeros here, because negative 1 only appeared once, I know the graph will cross the x-axis at negative 1. Because I have a multiplicity of 2, then I know the graph will just touch the x-axis at x equals 1. And then at x equals positive 2, that only appeared one time as well, so the graph will cross the x-axis there. So we have determined our zeros, and we know whether or not the graph is going to cross or touch. So we can enter those values in here. So zeros where the graph crosses the x-axis will be negative 1, and just separate these with a comma, as well as positive 2, and then the graph will touch the x-axis at x equals positive 1. Now, for the y-intercept, remember the y-intercept is always found by letting x equal 0. So to find this y-intercept, we are just going to substitute in 0 for x. So if you're going to do that, that's like finding f of 0, plugging 0 into the original function. So that would be negative 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 1 squared times 0 minus 2. So that would be a negative 1, and then we have a negative 1 squared, which is positive 1, times negative 2, which overall leaves me with a positive 2. So that tells me that my y-intercept is going to be positive 2. That could also be written as a coordinate, 0 comma 2. Alex, however, just wants you to list the y value here, so the y-intercept is positive 2. So now that we have all of these pieces, we can put the pieces together and create the function. And again, I highly recommend that you do this on paper first before we do it in Alex. So I don't want to erase any of my work quite yet, so I'm just going to put my, my graph down here, kind of small, before I do it on Alex. I know I have a y-intercept of positive 2, so I'll go ahead and plot that. I know my zeros, my x-intercepts were at negative 1, positive 1, and positive 2. And we said the end behavior was that the left and right side of the graph, both sides are going to fall. So I'm going to draw little arrows pointing downward. So this is going to be a rough sketch. Now at negative 1, we said the graph crosses the x-axis. So therefore, I know this graph is going to come up and cross the x-axis there. Now I'm not sure how high the graph is going to go. So you could have your graph come up and then come down and, and cross through the y-axis at positive 2. If your graph did not come up as high as the one that I have graphed here, that would be fine because this is a rough sketch. So a rough sketch is sufficient. Then at x equals positive 1, because of the multiplicity, the graph is just going to touch or bounce off of the x-axis. And then it's going to have to come up, but eventually decrease again, and then cross through the x-axis at x equals positive 2. So this would be a rough sketch of the graph. Again, let me show you in a different color. If you happen to have your graph maybe not come up as high as mine, maybe your graph looked like this, and maybe your graph came up even higher over here, that would be totally fine, because you have the correct shape, the correct zeros, the correct end behavior. So this is just a rough sketch. This would be completely fine.
So knowing what the graph looks like now, I'm going to go ahead and erase some of my work and scroll down to the bottom to try to demonstrate how to answer the next part, which is the graphing part in Alex. So forgive me as I erase here, but I want to keep that graph that I'm looking at there and we will come down and see what's this going to look like and how do I answer this question for part D. So it says graph the function by doing the following. The first step it says is to plot the points. So first we've got to plot the points where the graph is going to intersect the X and or the Y axis. So that means we are going to be plotting the X intercepts and the Y intercepts. And we do that by choosing this icon here and you'll just be able to type in whether it's an X or Y intercept. So let me start with the first X intercept, which was at negative one zero. So I'm gonna choose X intercept that's selected and plot the point. And then it's gonna prompt me for the behavior near the graph of that X intercept. So looking at my hand drawn graph, at negative one, I see the behavior like so, that it's not just crossing through, but I can see that the graph is increasing there. So I'm gonna select the first one because that shows it's crossing through and it's increasing. That's my behavior at that X intercept. I'll go ahead and do the next X intercept, which, which was positive one. So one, zero. And again, looking at the behavior at the next X intercept, if I highlight it, I see that that was the X intercept that touched the graph, touched the X axis. So I'm gonna select the appropriate one, which is the fourth one here. The last X intercept is positive two. And last time I choose that behavior. This one crosses through the x-axis, but the graph is decreasing, so I choose the second one. Then I also want to be sure to remember the y-intercept, which was at 0, 2. That one, it will just plot. So we have plotted the points, and we have also gone ahead and selected the correct behavior. So lastly, you just click the graphing icon, which is going to be this one here. And hopefully your graph is going to look something similar to what we graphed over here. Remember again, our graph might be slightly different depending on how high we had graphed the maximum and how high we graphed this second maximum. But the overall shape is accurate. The X and Y intercepts are accurate and the end behavior is accurate. So that should be good. We'll check just to double check. And yes, we got a green light. I hope that helps.